Okay. Someone standing in. All right. So I promised you that we wouldn't do too much of a <clears throat> hey, tell me about yourself. Mm-hmm. But for those that don't know you, um, we've been friends for a long time. We work on the CrossFit seminar staff together. Um, and you've got, I guess, a similar CrossFit story to many in that you found it post dance. Is that correct? Or yeah. Post so, some yeah, life? I was um, dancing and I was dancing at uni as well. So my minor is in dance. Um, and then I actually like, um, I was always really sporty and I snapped my ACL skiing in uni. So I like my second, that. my first year of uni, I snapped my ACL. And so what happened was I started seeing a personal trainer uh, and then in my build up to surgery and then my recovery from surgery, I was getting into training and did like half marathon and just got into like fitness and going to the gym. Um, and How did that, you get so strong? fuck knows. Are you strong from just CrossFit or were you always strong? Um, I did, I did like a little bit of when I was younger, like we were always super active as a family. So like I've spent every winter on the mountains, every summer or behind the boat. Mm. And then I did like, I grew up, like I always learned how to swim. I'm not a good swimmer, but I always yeah. did swimming. I always did a little bit of athletics, did a little bit of martial arts, a little bit of gymnastics, like just this weird like combo where I only ever did a couple of years of it, but just enough to like. Look, that story, mate, like that's, I've heard that story, like oh, I was active as a kid, blah, 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 mm. but that, that tends to always result in like, I guess, just a good general crossfitter, which you also are, but like the, the strength to me is something that like your particularly your overhead strength, I'm mm. like, yeah, but I came into from? the sport with like gigantic shoulders to begin with. Yeah, like okay. I always, just... I have a very triangle build yeah, so and like, always had that. yeah, I just okay. think that I had a build and I was a bit like, I've always been a more solid human. So like I kind of came into it with like, I mean, it took me a while to figure out a barbell, but I could move more weight than majority of females when they yeah, start you, CrossFit. You, you knew that from the start. From day yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And that was something I also loved it. So yeah, I okay. fully biased my training to it massively in the early days. So... I think well, I want to cover a fair bit with you, but one thing that I'm interested in is that you've been on a path to to become a regional slash sanctionals. I'm going to have to get used to those. <laughs> and for the first time ever now, as an individual, you've qualified for a sanctional, which is look, that's everybody, I guess, mm. but you know what I mean, qualified mm. for a regional. But the last five years, you've had this this sort of hovering around, potentially could take that next step, maybe not, and. I wanted to get an idea of the emotions behind that and like just the ups and downs of that because I imagine Mm. that there's probably a good amount of people in CrossFit that probably fall on the leaderboard somewhere between the 500 to to 100 mark at the open at the end of each year Mm. and it's Mm. like am I there or am I not or is this something I want to dedicate lots of time to or is it not so that's me just talking out loud about what I'm going to interview you about. But <laughs> let, let me let me start here. You qualified for sanctionals. Where did you finish in the Open this year in Oz? Uh, 16th. So it could be 17th. I'm pretty sure it's 16th. So high. Like you've never finished anywhere <clears throat> near. Was it as satisfying as you thought it might be to, to qualify? Yeah, fuck 16th? yeah. It was? Yeah. Okay, um, that's nice. And like you said, like, you know, how long has it been building up for? It's been three years. Hmm. It's been three years to get this result. And it's not been three years to like... I didn't plan like, hey, 2019 open, that's going to be my year. It's going to be amazing. Everything's going to fall into place. But it was like, I've been waiting for three years to have these performances. And I'm finally starting to realize where my potential is and where my fitness is. And the cool thing is, is that I'm still nowhere near my ceiling. Like, I'm like, fuck, I... The only reason I know I'm fitter is purely based on my numbers and my data. I don't feel like I'm anywhere near where I could be yet. right. I guess that makes sense. There's no point where you're just like, oh. Yeah, it's not like, this. I've got this. Like, I won, I won CrossFit. <laughs> so the three, I'm, I'm fascinated by that, that three years was mm. the decision because you, you've been to the games in a team in 15. Mm. You've been to regionals in a team that same year and two years prior to that. Yeah, Golden so State in SoCal. Yeah, 13, 2013. 12. So even being part of those teams, you never really thought, oh, I'd like to do this as an individual. That didn't cross your mind or it didn't think something that you... I never thought I was really that competitive. Okay. I just didn't even put myself in the same league as any of those other girls. Um, and I was really inspired by them. And I thought that like, I thought that I had fitness and I thought that I had like potential, but I just, I, I thought I was out of their league. Um, I, didn't, I didn't think that I had that like gift 
that talent. And Isn't now that? the change has been that I don't believe that anybody has a talent. Yeah, I was going to say, like, is the change that you believe you now have it or that it doesn't the, exist? The thing is, is that the people that, have, that are ahead of me have just done more hours than me. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. now I'm catching up because I've been doing this for like over seven right, years. Right. So now it's like, hey, I've, I've got some hours in the bank. My results are a reflection of the time that I've put in. So what, what came first? Did you start to see the results and then you thought, oh, maybe I can actually do this? Or did you decide, I want to try and do this? And then you put in the work to get the results. Like, was there a turning point where you said, yep, I can potentially be this, this yeah. sanctional or <clears throat> regional um, No, the turning point came later, but I, I knew that I wanted to compete. I was, always, I was always kind of, you know, like on the outside, always sitting in the 300s, 400s. And then occasionally I'd be in the top 200. Like yep. I'd, if I were at a push, like I would, I would be top 200. Yep. And then I sat down with Matt Swift three, yeah, two and a half, three years ago and was like, hey, what do I do if I want to be competitive? Like, I want to go to regionals. Yep. And he turned around and was like, fuck regionals, go to the games. That's okay. got to be the goal. You've okay. got to be, you've got to be your best and the, you know, your potential is only limited by what you believe you can reach. So if you sure. reach for something within, you know, like mm-hmm. that's just mm-hmm. beyond your grasp, like regionals, you're actually not going to realize your potential. If you go for that big goal, then you're pushed to take big action and then you realize so much more. And, and it doesn't really, the goal actually doesn't matter. It's the steps that you have to take to do something that is way beyond what you think you can do. And that's where you realize what you're capable of. So the switch was like, you know what? Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be me performing a little better. I actually have to evolve and become this games athlete. Yeah, sure. So I, so in a weird way for three years, I've already been a games athlete in my head. Right. And it's just taken that long for my fitness to catch up. <laughs> that makes, it, it makes so much sense to me because I was, I was going to say that, I've, I've done it several times as well as a coach. There'd be so many conversations in affiliates around the world where somebody says, I want to go to regionals or, mm. some, or a coach says, I think you can make regionals. Mm. And then that never comes to fruition. I mean, obviously it does sometimes, but probably the vast majority of times, the amount of times that's said to the amount of times it, it actually comes true mm. is, is they'd be way out of whack. However, I don't know how many times I've said to somebody who's still coming 500th in the in the country. I've said, I think you can go to the games. Yeah. So that recalibration of of what you're capable of that that's I mean Matt, you and me both know Matt personally, and we know mm. he's brilliant for that type mm. of stuff. But it's it's I'm not surprised that he was the one to to make that turning point for you. Yeah, I think um like and that was when I decided that I had to be competitive. Like I'd always been like I'm a coach, I'm the I'm the trainer, like I'm the red shirt. This is w- my priority. Sure, sure. And like I lived in the affiliate and then it was like actually after um step and, and it didn't I didn't totally depart from it, but I certainly yeah, yeah. stepped into this athlete kind of persona and it, and one of the big changes for me was actually forgetting about quality of movement. I spent so much time worrying about, you know, perfect movement, um, being really efficient with my barbell, working on my gymnastics. And I had to let myself let go of some technique in order to get the intensity. And, and, and now I find that kind of that line where I'm tiptoeing between like, I, my mechanics break down a lot more now, but I'm so much faster. Yeah. And I think what's, what's interesting about that is that people might hear what you've just said then. And it's like, Oh, so she's saying that she doesn't move well. And it's like, that's not what you're saying at all. You mm-hmm. actually move really well at intensity. Yeah. I've, I've seen it many a time, but it's that like when you're on the absolute threshold now, yeah. potentially taking the risk to exactly taking mi- the risk. minor mechanical errors creep in or maybe a failed rep mm. here and there. Mm. And it's, it's quite calculated, isn't it? We're not, yeah. we're not talking that's about it. Like, like, stupid things. The, it's the risk. That's, the, like, that's exactly the word. It's the risk. It's like I have to be as efficient as possible because any efficiency is just en- energy bled out. Like you sure. just lose power. So it's like how efficient can I be, but also how fast can I be? And, and that's the risk. It's like you, you, I almost have to try and in my mind just like leave behind the because i know i'm efficient i know i'm really good at that stuff i spent a long time doing it um so now i just let that be automatic right and let that happen and i just go and i just try and push um can you it's it's funny you you know how you say oh my mechanics break down a lot more now i'm sure if you watch back on video you see it's like oh, i'm actually still moving <laughs> pretty good like your idea of mechanics yeah yeah down yeah, compared yeah. To many would, would be different can you think of a can you give me a real life example from, from this year's open where you're just like, you know what, I've got to pull the trigger on this and this is not going to be a good demonstration <clears throat> of a dot, dot, dot. Um, 
I'm trying to think through the workout. Little things, um, you know, like wobbles. If I'm um, trying to be really efficient, I'll sit right back on my heels, uh -huh. knees out. When uh -huh. I'm when I'm being a little lazy and I'm just pumping pumping, pumping through, reps, like yeah. fucking however 19 reps. Yeah. I will let my knees slam forward and I'll keep my torso upright. Okay, cool. So I'm much more vertical, yep. but my my weights displace poorly, I guess. Has this been a fun journey to find out little idiosyncrasies about Yeah, and it's like tiny that? things like that. And yep. it's like, you know, even like burpees, like burpees, I'm, I'm sure, just sure. flopping to the ground. Oh, like I, totally to the point where I, st and I still <laughs> control them too much. I still control them too much. Yep. And I've got like, I had Rob judging me and he's like, just drop, yep. just get down, yep. stop controlling it, get on the floor. And I'm like, Oh, I can just let gravity do the work yeah, for me. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So I, you know, like you just flop, you let go, you don't worry about tension, you just get down. And I think one thing that we've uh, like we've had these conversations lots of times as we grapple with the, the level one material, we're, we're fortunate like that. But the reason that the floppy burpee is okay for you is because I know it's not the only burpee you can do. Mm -hmm. You you can do all the different types of burpees. You can do the strict controlled one, therefore the floppy one isn't the only one you can access. Yeah, well you like just, we said, like I've got the strength. Exactly, I've got the strength exactly. to kind of support that. And a little bit like the wall deviation. Scenario. It's like you've got both wall balls, so it's like right, in this context right now, given that the goal is as many reps as possible, mm. not I guess it's like, if I'm in competition, the goal is different. The goal is sure. not long-term health. The goal is like short-term performance. Yep. So like, there'll be little changes and modifiers that I'll make in the name of, if I can do more work in less time, I'm gonna sure. do that. And and that to me is actually a, a better expression of my fitness. And it, it, well, it's, it's more work capacity, it, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So by definition. Um, talk to me about when you maybe got it wrong. So uh, like, During the open? Yeah. Um, look, I did every workout twice. Yep. The bar You're very muscle honest up. about that. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you about that later. That, that's yeah. sort of cool. Like I think it's people play that close mm. to their chest, but you didn't. It was nice. Um, I did every workout twice. I did the bar muscle up burpee workout 19.4. 19.4. The ah, the yes. the yeah. Yes, I did that one three times, and I I butchered the second attempt. I just right. messed up. I. Um, went way faster in the first part, like took off, it was not and by way faster, it was only 10 seconds faster, but it was that it much more effort you, that yeah, it was yeah, like, it, it was, it was, it was just under three minutes or about three minutes on the dot and I just like blew up in the second part. So what happened was in the second part, um, I tried to change my rep scheme on the bar muscle ups okay. um, because the push, you know, the, the burpee and the bar muscle up, that push just, it was, it was horrible in yep. that workout. So I went into my second attempt going, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room, a little bit more time, and I'm, I'm going to break up the bar muscle ups. Uh -huh. And it just fell apart. I was gassed as hell. Yep. And as soon as I dropped off that pull-up bar, I was just standing around staring at it. Right. Um, so I didn't even finish the third round of bar muscle ups. Okay. The third round or it was it was bad. Like even maybe the second round, it yep. just felt it just fell apart. And I just I just finished it for the sake of getting to the to the kind time yeah, cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the third time round, I actually went a little slower. Uh -huh. So it was a three and a half minute part one. So, and then I went out as a bigger set as possible in the bar muscle ups. Right. So So mm. if I can re relating it back to the mechanics of moving well, mm. like you were a little bit sloppy. In that second attempt that went terrible, mm. you were a little bit sloppy. Like, like it was, how are your mechanics in that? Um, I, you know, I think my mechanics, my mechanics on the bar muscle up were probably better because I was doing smaller sets. Sure, so sure. there was no chicken wing because I wasn't getting to that point where it was like, I'm just trying to get over the bar now. Yeah. So my mechanics were, were a little bit better, but I was from that first snatch burpee piece, I was just like doubled over, like, <laughs> just like, I'm, I'm, give me some oxygen. It's funny because it was only 10 seconds faster. Mm. That's that's one extra set on any bar muscle up. Like if you had to break it up into two sets instead of three, then you've made up mm. the 10 seconds. So. Yeah, so the different was, so the first time it was 310, second time was three minutes. The third time round, I was like three and a half. So I knew I had a minute wow. 10 wow. for every round. Okay. And and so that 30 second difference, it was like- You did it in three minutes at one three, point. So second attempt was three minutes, yeah. Third attempt was three and a half minutes. I knew I had a minute 10 to get through. I kind of cruised. Yep. So yeah, that was that was a really like, and I was really down on myself with that one as well. Like mm -hmm. it was just like getting to the, towards the end of the open. I knew that I was sitting in the top and I was feeling, you know, you feel really good about it, but you're also like, suddenly the leaderboard starts creeping into your brain. Well, let's talk about getting really, like, let's talk about getting really down. <laughs> three, three years of you making some attempts at like, you know, I know that this was the, real, the first open that you really felt like you put things to the side to have really good a good crack mm -hmm. at this. 
over the three years where you said I want to do this um, were there some times where you're just like eh this is not happening or what was the darkest <clears throat> what was the darkest time in the three years the worst time was when I wasn't eating enough so I was eating like I was sitting on 1,700 calories and 1,900 calories a day and I was doing, um, I was on the Forte method, so I was, I was only doing one session a day, but I was just like hitting a wall and training every day. Like wow. every day I'd get through the lifting and then I'd be like, I just time are you? don't want to do it. So this is during, uh, this is before the open last year. Okay. Yeah, so January, December, January, I was on really low calories from a um, nutrition company that were shit house. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I was just like very emotional. So I'd have really good weeks and then really bad weeks. Okay. Um, and slowly like came out of that and just started eating more food for one. Um, but also started to spend a little bit more time. I was training with Matt and I was also um, hanging out with his wife, Wendy, uh -huh. um, who I sat down and chatted with. She's a sports psychologist. Sure, she's, sure. she's brilliant. Um, and so just basically um, figured out what was it that I was focusing on in my sessions and, you know, why was I getting so down and, and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, I, I know that there was other things going on with like my nutrition and, and stuff like that, but I think it was a lot of like, it really did come down to a lot of mindset stuff as well. Okay. Um, and I think that's for, for any athlete trying to do yeah, anything. It's like, you know, it's like in three of years, course. it's like you, you don't have a, you don't have a good day every day. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you just don't. And, um, the more that I've figured out how to keep going is, you actually just accept the bad days as just like whatever it's going to happen sure. and, and rather than being like why is it such a bad day like why is it all going wrong it's like you know what it's going to happen it's it's just going to it comes with the territory so as soon as you just kind of like accept it, accept it. it it's it's totally manageable well i want to we will also explore god i'm reminding myself of all these things i want to ask you about but you managed to build up this fairly like pop like your social media profile became really large at one point. It was, it was still in the growth, mm. so it still, <laughs> still really is large. Um, there's a tendency out there right now for people to be ultra positive all the time. Like there's like this, mm. I'm not going to be negative type thing out there. Um, did you ever suffer from that? Or uh, like, did you ever have anything around that? Yeah, probably. Probably before I sort of like, I've, I reckon like for me in my kind of athlete journey, just like mentally I've matured a little bit in probably the last sure. 12 months. Yeah, like you can um, call a spade a spade. Just yeah, like, ah, oh, this is yeah, a bad like, day. That didn't go And you know, to prior to that, like fuck, you know, like just having tantrums in the gym, getting really pissed off, sure, like sure. just being super results focused. And like yep. if it wasn't a good day, it was the worst that's, day ever. That's exactly and what And it's I'm like, and to. like, yep. you know, everybody in the gyms had those days. And I, like, I was the girl who was like, you would finish a bad workout and in the open. So like in the open 2016, like there was not many workouts that I didn't finish and walk out the back of the gym and just like cry. Like you're just really? so upset about it. Wow. Just cause I don't know, you just get really attached to your result rather than what your effort was like and where you're at and, and, and what's realistic. And, and you know, you, the reality of what your fitness is versus your expectation just don't line up. And that's sure. what, what the missing link is um but yeah i think um you I'm know part of that positive like, thing is like so you just you do want it to be really you always want it to be good right yep. but like, you're just never going to be 100 percent. and i have this battle with you know people that i talk to people that i work with people, people my clients it's like it is not always going to be good you're not always going to feel good and that's okay yes. it is okay yes. to not feel 100 percent. it doesn't mean that you still don't that you have like don't get to do the work that's it's right. like yeah. It's like, I don't always feel like training. I don't always feel like going and do the extra stuff. I don't always feel like doing like, I'm doing breathing stuff at the moment. And like I, like the breathing and meditation stuff, I'm like, I don't want to sit down and do nothing. I just don't want to do that. Okay. But I'm doing it and it's actually really paying off and I'm starting to really enjoy it and, sure. and, and, and reap the benefits of it. But yeah, the, the positive thing is like, it, it's not the reality. It, it does sound to me though, that like you've got this nice realistic approach towards the amount of work that it takes to, to be where you are. Like... There's some stuff in there that's not the most exciting stuff in the world and mm. it won't be exciting every day, but you do it because you know it's valuable rather than you're pretending that it's just like, oh my God, loved my breathing work today, <laughs> all that type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, I guess it's um, like some of the extra stuff is just being invested in the 1% mm -hmm. like, and having the mindset that everything matters. Like every, I don't sure. sweat the small stuff, but I also don't undermine the, the details, you like know, that. it's like, yeah. it's like, I don't want to get caught up in the little things, yeah. but when I apply, you can't it, yeah, you can't, you can't yeah, exactly. It so either. it's like, you know, don't underestimate those little things. So, 
Um, when I turned my whole life into like, hey, like I, I'm assuming the identity of this athlete and, and, and these are all the things that the best athlete that I know would do. Like mm. you just become that character and you just evolve into that person. So it's like everything has to kind of be, be in line with that. So yeah, all those, all those little extra things help. How much pressure have you felt in your endeavors athletically from one, your personality or your persona on social media? Because you've got a decent following. And two, the fact that you work for CrossFit headquarters. Um, probably not a lot, to be totally honest. Okay, that's no, that's fine. Um, I think the like I'm social not media thing. By the yeah, one. like I don't, I don't feel that either. No, I don't feel any pressure. Like, um, if anything, I feel. I feel that I I need to be um, I guess walking the walk more that's, more than anything. That's, I feel it the other way. Yeah. I, like, I, I feel to be a good seminar trainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to be fit. Yeah. Not like because I'm a seminar trainer, I better be fit. Yeah. It's like, I know that it helps. Yeah, me it's work like well. it, it it like I feel like I'm backing myself. Sure, sure, so, sure. So yeah, I think and the social media thing like. Um, I enjoy it and I enjoy putting out information out to people. Mm-hmm. I do sometimes feel like I'm not the authority and I and I and I don't know why the fuck some people follow me. Like, I'm like, <laughs> like, dude, so why? <laughs> like why? Like oh, why? I just post videos of like and do you know what so the way that my Instagram started, I have a person oh, I have a personal I account. Know, right? I'm like, gonna say this before Kate <laughs> says this. I know that it was never the plan. Yeah. To, to become this no, social no. media mobile. So, it just sort of was happening. Uh, like, yeah. It was happening in front of our eyes. Yeah. We were sort of laughing about it. I was like, oh my God, you know, who's this guy following me? Uh, just, yeah, I don't know. It, I, people are just interested in watching other people work out, I guess. But I have a personal account oh, yeah. and I was posting a whole lot of CrossFit stuff on it and I was like, I don't want to be that. I was I was actually a little embarrassed about it. Like I didn't sure. want to be the person that was um, posting a ton of CrossFit stuff that everybody would complain only talks about CrossFit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like didn't want to be that person. So I started a separate like quiet. It was public. Actually, I don't think you had a choice back then. Um, I, I don't know if you could make it public or private. Right. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like I just started a, a, a separate account that I didn't tell anyone about, and it was just CFK, and no one knew about it. I also had a blog. I had a blog happening that I didn't I send to blog. anybody. I just would vent on it or talk about the, my experiences. Oh, and God. I remember one of the trainers that I worked with I'm in the states about- found it, <laughs> and it was like I was dealing with a whole lot of really bad um, tendinopathy in my elbow. Like I just had golfer's elbow, which I still have like issues with, so but it was so bad at that point. And I was just like on the keyboard and anyway so the Instagram thing happened and I I just kept it away from all my friends I didn't want to bother them with so I did all my CrossFit posts on that and then long story short everybody started following me on that so now all my friends just but hey they opt in right like they opt in it's their choice (laughs) if they want to see it it's like and you got a few shares on on pretty notable pages. Like you've appeared on probably the games page. The, yeah, the game four, side of the shared a couple maybe. times. That's when you get the the big boost. I you like, either have to post something with <laughs> like, yeah, it's yeah. like it has to be reshared by Crested.com yep. or you have to be wearing as little clothing as possible. And then all of a sudden your followers grow. It's funny how well, it works like that. Well, you know what the next episode <laughs> then is, folks. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be just. Um, can you enlighten me? And no, we won't dive too deep into this, but you, like, how's social media been for you? Like, it's, this is not meant to be a podcast about mm. social media, but I think also a lot of the people that are in your shoes or have been, like, that sort of on the bubble, I want to get to regionals, they seem to be very keen to post personas of themselves on social media. Post personas. Yeah, like, how's, how's it been throughout this journey? Because you've made the journey mm. pretty public. Yeah, um, it's, it's probably been good, but I've, I've probably been using it to my advantage and, and probably abusing it a little bit to help me. So um, some of the stuff that I think about, I can put into words and I can verbalize better in writing than I can express it. Sure. And so there's a lot of stuff that I'll write out that I'm putting out as like, this is my experience and this is why I'm doing this. And it actually solidifies what I'm doing okay. really nicely. So yeah. one example was, and I'm not on Instagram currently, I'm actually having like 30 days of just no Instagram or Facebook, uh-huh. funnily enough. but. Um, I put up a post that was like, I fucking hate going to swimming. Like, I'm really bad at swimming. I don't have fitness in the pool. I'm, I'm not like, my stroke isn't terrible. I don't drown, but I just, I'm not good at it. And so I don't enjoy it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would, I would spend the entire day before swimming just being like, mm, do I go tonight? Is there a way that I can get out of it? Like, I know I need to, but maybe I'll go on Friday instead and just like have this whole talk and like, oh, how are my shoulders feeling after training? Oh, I have to train and then go to swimming. Maybe that's not a good, and you know, you just go through this whole like, sure. 
And I ended up putting a thing up because I was like, every time I do the swimming, every time it's done, I feel awesome. Yes, of course. And I was like, you know what? That's the practice. It's not even the swimming. Of course, I want my swimming to get better. Of but course, it's not yeah. even, the, what it actually ends up being is just this commitment to the person that I want to be. Mm. And me showing up and me, despite the negative thoughts, because it's never, you're never going to feel like it, despite the, the voice that's like, maybe you don't have to go. Despite that, like you put that shit aside and you just do the thing you need to do. And then that reinforces the whole pattern that's happening in those connections in your brain. And it's suddenly, it's like, that's what you have to be able to do as an athlete. And so, and so you, that's the practice. Is, and the social media or the, the Instagram, whatever it is in that, like the articulation of that as a post in your brain has allowed you to actually process those thoughts a little yeah. bit more. Is that, is yeah, that absolutely. So, and I think that's what a lot of people do. That's what it's for. A lot of people share yeah. like super inspirational crap and maybe they don't do it, but they want to do it. Yep. You know, like, and so I think that sometimes, sometimes what people get baffled with on Instagram is they're like, man, this person's posting all these things, but like, they're not like that. And you know, maybe they should take their own advice. And it's like, they're probably trying to do that. That's probably right. what they're posting on Instagram right, because okay. that's what really, you know, that's what connects with them and that's what they're trying to do. Mm. And so they put it out not as a, hey, hey world, you should do this thing. It's like, it's like I, a, I, I, I love this. this. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love this and I'm going to share this because I think some other people are going to love this. Okay. It's like, I connect with this. I'm trying to do this. And, you know and like, that's, yeah. You've definitely, like, that's, uh, that's something I haven't considered. I probably, and not in that, any sort of aggressive way, have have thought like most people have is it's like, yeah, mm. that person's not. Now like, some we, people, we both, we both know that there, person's there not are that in real some life. people who are just like clickbait, who are just trying to get, you know, the sure. likes. And I, and I definitely think that there's some um, insincere people on posts up there. But for, for me, like a lot of the stuff, if anybody has ever seen myself, I've been like, Ugh. like mm. it's just stuff that connects for me. Like it's just stuff that I really like. And it, and that, that Instagram profile is like a mood board almost, you know, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a little, like it's like a little inspo board or something for me. Back through it and be like, like, has it been something nice? Yeah, occasionally. Throughout yeah, there's species. some stuff in there that I'll go back through. Um, there's actually a lot of drills and things that I've done in the past that I'm like, oh, what was that thing that I was doing? And yes, I'll go back through I it. I feel like there was a phase of very nice gymnastics drills. Yeah, I, I did like a ton of gymnastics. Yeah, yeah, ton of gymnastics and then a lot of squat mobility stuff that I just, I always go back to that stuff. Yeah, cool. Okay. Hey, we're going to take a short break and then we'll come back and I'm going to ask you about what your prep is for sanctionals. All right, cool. Cool. And then this week in between these two seminars, I'm going to be in um, Queensland and well, Gold Coast. <laughs> what's the hardest thing about travel? Um, just the routine. Like, I just don't uh -huh. have a routine. I actually, you know, I can train pretty well when I travel. On the road. Um, I feel like I've gotten more conditioned to it. Oh, without a doubt. Like, You've traveled so much. I'm good at just knowing how to push and when to push and when to pull back. Mm -hmm. um, and the full time method happens to be Friday through uh, Monday through Friday. Right. So I have my two days in the weekend to kind of either scale it back and dial back the volume, which we tend to do during our lunchtime workouts, or just not train at all. Mm -hmm. So it gives me a little bit of wiggle room to kind of to adjust the, the, the days that I train as much as I like. Um, but yeah, so this month was really bad. Just a lot of travel. Um, and so I've kind of been through a few weeks of like, I was sick. I've had a few niggles. I've just been a little bit just a little stressed out and a little bit anxious sure. and my training's not been great. So that's um, thrown me quite a bit, but I've just come out of that. And I've, the last couple of days have been really good in the gym. So I'm feeling better, but I know that I've still a little bit more traveling to come. So well, you've got time. <clears throat> um, the, the sanctionals aren't until yeah. 18th of yeah, May. Still got a, a little bit of time. Now you, you know, you, you spoke about how the goal was to make the games, mm. but your goal before saying I'll make the games was to make regional slash sanctionals. Yeah. So now that you've ticked off the original goal, how has the motivation levels been? Um, you know, it's funny. Like, like I just said, I've had a really hard three weeks and I, you know, so I could step out onto sanctionals floor tomorrow and feel awesome. And I know that my fitness is where I need it to be. I know where my strength is at. I know that I'm going to perform well and I thrive on the floor and I love the pressure. You do. I love You're the very much a performer. Like I love that. And I think that, you know what? I actually think it comes from dance. I think it comes from stage presence and learning to perform in front of people. Sure, sure. And I enjoy that, um, that, that just that whole environment. Um, but the training has been really interesting just because any problem at the moment seems to be amplified mm. because of the pressure that I have with this short-term goal. It's a time, time yeah. constraint yeah. around yeah. it. So yeah. um, just like just being a bit run down and like 
having a bit of time off here and there, I've just been like, oh, I'm going to lose my fitness. Mm. Oh, my God, my training's not going to get... So I've just been like, just overanalyzing, overthinking, and a little bit, just just a little bit, flipping out a little bit, and, and I know I'm going to be fine. But the training seems to be a little bit harder at the moment, right, okay. just mentally. Well, look, uh, I mean, the Open is hard. Yeah. Like, the Open is such a hard five weeks, and so when you finish it, irrespective of if it went how you want it to or it didn't, it's like backing up after that is going to be is going to be pretty yeah. tricky. Yeah. Hey, are we going to are we going to see you at other sanctional events potentially? Not not this season, I yeah. imagine, but soon. Now yeah, now that I've got I'm, something in this, I'm just going to keep you sipping can it. Finally actually use the prop. Oh, How's so it taste? so natural. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have not actually made a plan. Do you know, my plan for the next year is to actually not travel so much. Okay. Like, I do so much traveling and my schedule is so all over the place that my next 12 months is actually looking like me blocking out my weekends and just not making myself available for seminars. So, sure. um, I want to pick probably one international sanctioned event and target that, um, I don't know what one. Yeah, if I had to put you on the spot now, like even if you, let's, let's not say targeting one, which ones have stood out to you as ones that I, look well, interesting? I was kind of thinking of Dubai. Oh, cool. Like that would be kind of a cool one to do. Um, Certainly the roster there is, is yeah, super competitive I, I mean, by the looks of it. that competition is, it's, it's really, it's a big one now. Like it's been running for a long time. It has, it has. It was before sanctionals, wasn't it? Like it, it's yeah, se- exactly, several years exactly. before sanctionals, so, yeah. That could be one. Um, and it, it horrendous, like quite horrendous yeah. flight to Dubai just quietly. Yeah, oh, yeah God. it yeah. is. But also, the other options are not so great either. Like, it's like, what, Miami, um, Cape Town. Sure. French throat. Like, the, there's not so many great you, options. You make us. a good point. I mean, um, Ch- China is straight up. Yeah. Um, but that sanctional event this year... Well, this season, it's it's actually next weekend, or mm. April 26th, mm. 7th for our listeners. Um, and then I believe, I'm not 100%, but next season, I think it's early. Yeah. Yeah, I spoke to I spoke to Liang about, about that. He's yeah. involved in I, some yeah, capacity. Yeah, I thinking, who was I talking to? One of the, one of the judges from um, past regionals, she was like, hey, the Asia Championship is, uh, is awesome. Like, you should come out mm-hmm. for it. So, yeah, possibly. I think for me, though, for the next 12 months, it's like actually – stay in Australia more and stay in one city. Yeah, yeah, I can appreciate that. Um, and focus that. on the Open. Like, the Open coming up in October is going to be... It's so close, different. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, what are your... Like, I know I know your general um, energy towards it, if you will, but the new f- the new format, it's pretty awesome, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Like, it's I, so it's cool. It's yeah. really cool. I think... Um, you know, I think everyone's like, oh man, regionals, it's gone. But no, it's like, we, we still have... It's back. It's evolved. It's evolved. On roids. And, yeah. Not, on, not on roids. <laughs> <laughs> none, none of that here. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, like, I it's so. evolved. I, so. I actually saw a little snippet just yesterday from Ben Bergeron just saying like, the sanctionals are a better test. And I was like, I was interested by it as a statement. It's just like, look, regionals was confined to the floor and now sanctionals has got people doing things that we more see in the games, and it's it's really hard to argue you with know that. What's really cool about it being in Wollongong, they can use the ocean, they can use the beach, they can do whatever. They can they use want. the mountains, like, like this. Suddenly, ma- oh, like that the concept more. of like be prepared for the unknown is really put into practice yep. because, yeah, it's it's the regionals was you know to a degree it was like it was the same thing for everybody, which yep. was. A great way to... It was level. awesome. Yeah. It was like it leveled everyone. And, and so everyone getting into the games had to pass that particular test. But um, yeah, I mean, I think sanction, sanctioned events are awesome. Yeah. And we're going to see more and more. Like mm. the, in the next season, we're going to get more and more. Um, <laughs> I, I keep asking you to look into like the, the distant future. But um, how much time are you going to need post-sanctional to be ready to go for the Open again? Like it's... Do you know, like, the way that I approach the open sanction events, games, is, like, like what's what happens to my training? Nothing changes. Mm. Like, I'm still training to better myself, to find my limit, and, you know, my success doesn't ride on one open or one sanction sure. event. And my cha- training will change. Like, I will go through waves in training, and, and, yeah, I might have to take some downtime and, and just kind of reload a little bit. Mm. Um, but, like, really... After next after the October Open, whatever happens, wherever the leaderboard falls, I'm I'm still training every day. Mm. So I, I don't think you know it throws me too much. I know that my big picture path is is I've still got years. Sure. So I, I'm not too like I, I'm. It, the reason that I've come out of this little funny 
few weeks after the open is that I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I just have to train. I yeah, just have yeah. To love what I do. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't and have to like, change anything. Yeah, you just have like, to keep doing I what you're doing. I just have to enjoy every day turning up and trying to be better. And, and that's that's kind of what it comes down to. So I think, yeah, training will adjust in accordance to what's smart mm. and, and what I need to do um, as an athlete. However, like with like, hey, am I going to be ready for the open? Like when the open comes, I'll be as ready as I can be. <laughs> Hey, can I ask you, we've talked a lot about Kate the athlete. Let's talk about Kate the coach for a moment because what people I think, oh, that's not true, but maybe we see you a lot as an athlete on social media and things like that. Yeah. You've worked at several affiliates full-time, like managing affiliates. You're now pretty much full-time with the method, which is, mm. I know it's nutrition coaching, but from what I can understand, it's coaching individuals through all aspects yeah. of who they are. <laughs> yeah. Um, how much of that has exhausted, like I'm not saying has taken you away from your goal of an athlete, but coaching is giving yourself to people. Has that, have, have you found the balance between giving enough of yourself away and then working on yourself enough? Um, similar to sometimes social media reinforcing my values. Mm. My coaching, I reinforce my values in the same manner. So it's almost like, you know, when you teach something, you you learn it. You you know you learn it again. It's like it's a good answer. It, yeah, it's like it's the right answer. I, it is exhausting in the sense that I take on board a lot of people's difficulties and struggles. So sure. like emotionally, it can be it's a really big investment, and that can be if I'm if I'm not mindful, if I don't compartmentalize well, yep. it it crosses over and it doesn't cross over too. Yeah, okay. Like it doesn't really complement each other too well. Like. In an ideal world, I would not be working and just be 100% athlete. Yeah. But I love the coaching and, and I've been doing it for a while. So, you know, it's it's not so much stuff happening, you know, in that coaching life that I don't perform well as an athlete. I understand. Like, yeah. It's, can, can I pull you up on something? Do you really reckon you'd be the best athlete possible if all you were doing was being an athlete? You, you reckon that? I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying you wouldn't be, but I just... From what I know of you, like you, mm. you are fairly balanced. Yeah. Like you've got a nice amount of stuff yeah. that isn't athlete, and then you've got a nice amount of stuff in your life that isn't even CrossFit. Yeah. So I think, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't know unless I did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't ask you a few questions just to sort of wrap things up. We've talked about how you were sort of on the bubble, not on the bubble, but you're in that. I was on the bubble. Over the I, was, I was like, I was outside the bubble. Okay, outside <laughs> the bubble. Like, yeah, nothing. yeah, that's a fair <laughs> But you're in that space, it's probably almost more of a head space than anything else. Of uh, If I put my put my foot down, maybe I can make something mm-hmm. of this and become like a regional sanctionals athlete. What do you, and, and you did it. Yeah, and I think, you know, the transition was like, literally what just happened you're like you were like kind of there and i'm yeah, like yeah. no i wasn't what well, are you talking about you had people, people like me yeah people you i had a there. lot of people who were like believed in me and i didn't believe in myself sure well you've almost answered the question then but i just want to say as a parting to the people who are in that space listening mm. what's what's the most important thing um so believing in yourself and and obviously like it's not just like no oh, believe in yourself and yeah, everything will work out it's like no it's like if you decide that you want to compete, decide and commit fully a- and be that person. And that's why for me, something that I've carried for the last three years was something that Swifty said to me and it was assume the identity. Swifty, Matt Swift. Matt Swift. Yeah. Swifty. Um, the Swifty. Swift. Oh, he's yeah. fucking awesome. Um, so he said, assume the identity. And that was the thing that I had to do. And that was where I went from, I don't think I'm really that competitive and I'll yeah. always just be a coach to like, no, like I, I want to be competitive and I want to fully commit. And even if I like some of that stuff was like, I don't really get the whole, I will do anything to win. It took me a long time to come around to, I will try to win or like, I'll, I'll you know, like it's win or, or die kind of thing. Yep. And it took me a long time to kind of get, start to figure that stuff out so it was like you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe in your ability to be competitive and to be that athlete and to just take on that person um so you evolve into that person and then it's just consistency it's just consistency in training like my god the biggest difference for me has just been super consistent with my training program yeah. and i did the, the training plan for uh seven months seven or eight months and then i switched to the forte method and i've been on the forte method now for a year and a half cool so it's just like it's not necessarily what you did, but how you did it type thing. Like just yeah. like super consistent. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah. There's no tricks, hey, there's no like super crazy program. Like there's good programs out there, but I think the best thing that I did was I dialed back the volume. So when I went from oh, yeah. training plan to forte method, a couple things happened. 
volume dropped and I ate more food. So just like on the, just as Sounds a like pure athlete, living. it was like, yeah, it was like <laughs> so just on the athlete side of things, it was like, I was doing less work, but better. Uh -huh. And I was recovering a whole lot better and feeling better in training. So like those two things aligned and suddenly it was like, oh, hey, this is where you, this is how you be consistent. Like, oh, you support yourself by eating more food and like, okay, you don't do two day sessions a day every single day. And like suddenly I wasn't hitting my head against a brick wall every day. It was like, I was enjoying training. I was in for two hours and then I was out. out. Second question. Um, and you, what you've just said sort of relates to it. How often do you find yourself having these moments of, aha, uh -huh, I should have just looked in here and I would have actually, <laughs> I would have actually found the answer to my Oh problem. my gosh. All the time, <laughs> all the time, yeah. like everything. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes the goal is different, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. with competition. And I would say that specifically for the way that I eat, I eat a lot of carbohydrates sure. to support my training. And that is um, probably um, moving away from like the L1 thing a little bit to a degree. Well, the, but the zone diet is 40, 30, 30. Yeah, it's, it's so I, yeah, absolutely. Think, so yeah. I, so 40, 30, 30, I'm probably on 50, 25, 25, something, something around sure. there. So it's not far. Um, but you've, you've done 40, 30, 30. Mm -hmm. You've seen what works for you. And yep. then you've made adjustments. Yep. I'd say that's exactly in line with. Yeah, the, absolutely. The yeah, protocols. based based on data yes. and 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 objectively measuring my results. Perfect. Then yes. Okay. So yeah, I mean, and and that's. Okay. It's so it's so much like of this stuff. It's not even funny. Okay. Third question, and like again, sort of know the answer to this. How much credit can I take from being your partner <laughs> at a competition we won <laughs> about two weeks before the open? Like you know, like. Feel free to say it's the only reason you made it. That was inspiring. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I could do it. And then I was like, man, if Eddie can do it, I can do it. Did you have fun, did you have fun competing? Yeah, it was that? awesome. It was, cool it was a great week. Okay, last question for you. And this is, this is I, need, I need a definitive answer. Are you going to get to the CrossFit Games? Yeah, absolutely I am. Cool. All right. Do you know, last week when I had my interview finished, I had the, like the worst sign-off. I was like, that'll do. <laughs> And I actually haven't really thought. Of, Time. Yeah, I actually haven't thought about how I'm going to end this. But thank you. You need to like ask for something like in uh, kilos. You need like a weight. Like okay, well, and I'm what's gonna... your one or a max match? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What is your one rep max snatch in pounds? One. I think it's 185. It might be 186 because it's 85 kilos. Oh fuck! That. Sorry, didn't mean to sweat. I was just about to do the You're conversion. Be that was meant to be like the <laughs> sign off. But thanks very much. Keep converting pounds to kilos or get someone else to do it for you, which is really annoying. <laughs>